Hello, my name is David Webb and this is a video for Dweebo Vision. In this video I want to look back over the last week, the two games that were played and pick up on a few of the more interesting moves. The first game I'd like to look at is Tuesday night's game against Hride. This was the final board and the first move of interest I think is my play of Mew. Now at this point I am about 70 points behind. So I'm a bingo behind and it's quite a blocked board. There aren't many bingo lanes on this board. I have a bingo rack, but there's nowhere to play the bingos that I have, Tedium and Idiatum. So I played Mew up here and the reasoning behind that was that it opened bingo lanes in row 2 and column B. Now if I generate the choices, Mew doesn't appear on this list, but I can add it, and we'll look two plies ahead, and I'll now run the simulation. And that brings up 500 iterations, and my play of Mew is down towards the bottom of the pile. And at the top is Muti. Now, normally when we compare moves, we're looking at the final column, the difference in valuation, which I refer to as equity. But in this instance, what I'm trying to do is open the board up in order to play a bingo. Therefore, it's not just about score and rack leave. So the key figure to look at in this instance is the win percentage. Now, Muti wins 12.52% of games, and my play wins 8.87% of games. So it's about 3% or 3 games in 100 games are won by playing Muti rather than Mew. So Muti is the better move, but why? And it's slightly harder to explain this or to be sure that one is right as opposed to justifying equity differentials, but I will have a go. And I think the key factor here is that Mu is simply too easy to block. Any short play in row 2, three-letter word ending UG doesn't have a front hook, or the two-letter word creating something M doesn't have a front hook, is simply going to kill the board dead. Whereas Muti, although it doesn't open up any bingo lanes, it doesn't offer anywhere great for my opponent. What it does open up, though, is an op a scoring opportunity in row 11. If my opponent takes that opportunity, he will be opening up row 12 for a bingo. If he doesn't take that scoring opportunity, I can take it next go and I'll be opening up row 12. So I think Muti is better than Mu because it is more likely to generate a bingo lane that can't be shut down. And there's also the factor that this scoring opportunity in row 11 is not that great. AU only takes an S after it, and this double word square is not underneath the M, it's next to it. So you're really looking at just a three-letter play, so you're not looking at a fabulous scoring opportunity. Whereas my play of Mew, in game time my opponent played Cat, which was great for him, and it scored well. So it enables my opponent to score more than the Muti play. So I think that explains why Muti was a better play. The next move I'd like to look at is my far play. And I'm in a similar position. I'm behind. I'm about 117 points behind. So my situation has deteriorated. I don't have a bingo on my rack, but I do have some bingo -y tiles. Now, if I generate the choices, Zarf is one option, and my move appears second in this list that's been generated by the static evaluator. Let me run the simulation. And that brings up the 500 iterations. My move far is towards the bottom of the pile and the moves at the top are a fire in column A and 
Zarf in column 11. Again, it's important to look at the win percentages. A fire 3.21, Zarf 3.19, my move far 2.09. So it's less pronounced than in the Muti play, but a fire and Zarf are winning about 1% more games. So they are better moves. But why are they winning those games? Well, I think part of the answer is the score differential. I am 117 points behind. And I think Far is just not scoring enough. It's scoring 10 fewer points than a Fire and Zarf. So I think it's important to keep the scoring going because if you score fewer points and have a bingoy rat cleave, you're running the risk of bingoing but still losing. And another aspect of Far is that it's creating a fabulous scoring opportunity for my opponent underneath ZA. And whereas Far in itself is good because F takes an E and an A after it, if my opponent plays underneath ZA across here, then you're probably looking at only bingos ending in S. So it's just too easy for my opponent to get a 30 or 40 point score. And then again, even if I do have a bingo, because he's put in a 30 or 40 point score, that bingo may not be enough to win the game. This was a very tricky position to be in because, well, as you can see, even after a fire, the best move, I'm still going to lose 97% of the time. So my fate was looking pretty grim at this point. I think Zarf was a nice play because my opponent can't score well off the Z and there is a good floater in the R being provided as well as row 14 for bingos ending in S. And it's difficult for my opponent to block that without creating additional opportunities and he's not going to score hugely off that either. So I think Zarf was a nice play. And I think the difference between Zarf and a fire of 0.02% is just vanishingly small and had the simulation been run for longer their relative positions may have reversed and Zarf is good because it keeps column A open for bingos which a fire uh, removes so I think Zarf was the best play there so those are the two moves I wanted to look at from Tuesday night's game I'll now open Thursday night's game This is the move which I spent a lot of time on in game time. I didn't think the rat looked too bad at first with scoring tiles in the J and the F, and I've got the O which goes well with the J, but I really struggled to find a move here, and in the end I played info for just 14 points, and I thought that was pretty ropey, and I was fairly sure I'd missed something a lot better. These are the choices from the static analyzer with uh, use appearing at the top. Let me run the simulation. Okay, and that completes 500 iterations. Top play use for 33. But look at this. Info, my play, is second. And that is really surprising. I thought there were going to be a lot of plays better than info. It felt a poor play. When you've got the J and the F, on your rack and you have got vowels as well to score only 14 points really did feel suboptimal but look at the equity difference info was the second best play and it's just six points behind youths and i didn't see youths in game time so it scores 19 more points but it's only six points better so it's giving up 13 points well it's giving up eight of those by losing the s and it's giving up five more points by having a duplicate tile and there'll be other small differences based on the vowel consonant balance so youth superiority to info can be fully explained by score and rack leave but it's nice to see that info was the second best play now reverse order but the oboe play was also interesting so let me generate the choices. This is what I didn't see in game time. Oboe starting above the U of Cardi Q. What I did see was Oboe starting above the E. And this is the move I didn't like. I didn't like placing the E in the middle of column O. So the move I played 
was this one. Let me run the simulation. Okay, that brings up the 500 iterations, and the best play was Oboe beginning above the U of Cardiq, which has a valuation of 28.9. Oboe one square to the right, the move I didn't like, is 4.7 points, so nearly 5 points of equity worse. And my move is down here, and that has 20.3 points of equity. So my play was eight and a half points worse than the best placement of Oboe. So why? Why was it eight points worse? Well, Oboe in this position scores 11 more points. So that accounts for most of the eight points and it gives up three points. And well, when you're in the region of about three points, you're talking about pretty small numbers. So it's probably reasonable to just leave it at the fact that Oboe in this position scores more. So I think the only other move I wanted to briefly show you was the privet play. Now at this point, well there's one tile in the bag. I was very short on time. The queue was unseen. My concern was that it was in the bag and I was wondering should I keep the I or the I and the T in order to avoid being stuck with the queue. So here are the choices. Privet was my play. I'll run the simulation to the end of the game. Well, that brings up a thousand iterations. When I'm simulating to the end of the game, as indicated by many, rather than just two plies, I tend to run it for more iterations because that makes the result more statistically valid. Also, when you're close to the end of the game, the simulation runs much faster. So, simply from a time point of view, you can run it for more iterations. Top of the pile is Privet, and it was throughout the simulation. And that's really quite surprising. I played the move quite quickly. I was burning the eye, which I thought was a useful tile to keep. But Privet looks like it is the best play. Having said that, there are a number of plays which generate 100% wins. So it's difficult to be sure of exactly why Privet is best. This move, Ream, looked interesting as well as Theme. And what looked good about them was the score. They scored 37 points, which is the most of all these moves. And they both retained, both Theme and Ream retained the I for the Q. So I thought that that would mean that these were better plays than Privet. But Privet comes out on top. And I suspect it's probably because the rack leave of HM enables me to score 30 points next go in row 6 unless that's blocked by my opponent. But it's important to run these analyses. You feel you've got a, a feel for the game and have opinions during the game as to how optimal or suboptimal your moves are. And quite often those opinions are not borne out when you run the analysis. And that's really helpful because then you can really start to think about what's going on. And you've got some statistical information to guide you in your own thoughts so that you can have a better opportunity of assessing the, the value of a move. So those are the moves I wanted to look at from this week's games. I hope you found that analysis interesting. My name is David Webb and this has been a video for Dweebovision.